I had been dating my high school sweetheart for three years, and we agreed to apply to the same university, but when I happily went to her with my acceptance letter, I overheard her casually say to someone else, he can go by himself, it was just a lie anyway, it felt like a sharp sword pierced through my heart, the pain numbing me, chapter 1, I sat on the ground crying for almost half an hour before my emotions started to settle, from sadness and heartbreak to frustration and resentment, my feelings surged and ebbed quickly, now, I find myself unusually calm, what was a torrent of emotions has now become the calm sea after the tide recedes, wiping away my tears, I took a deep breath and walked up to Veronica, saying seriously, I got my acceptance letter, for a moment, it seemed like I saw a flicker of guilt in her eyes, or maybe I imagined it, Veronica cleared her throat, yeah, I got mine too, I stared at her, unmoving, you promised that if we both got into the same university, you would, Benjamin, I'm sorry, there's something I forgot to tell you, Veronica glanced to the side, avoiding my gaze, my mom doesn't want me to study medicine, she forced me to apply to South University, you told me your dream was to become a doctor, I asked softly, she frowned, looking annoyed, you know how my mom is, she's always been pushy, she says being a doctor is too hard and thankless, so she forced me to apply for finance at South University, I lowered my head without saying anything, so, this was the excuse she was using to brush me off, Veronica, do you really think anyone would believe that, yes, your mother is overbearing, but when has she ever been able to bend you to her will? Whenever you two disagreed, it always ended with her compromising. I didn't voice any of these thoughts. I just looked at her and calmly asked, So, we won't be going to the same university. I'm sorry, Benjamin, Veronica said, trying to placate me. Don't be mad. I'll treat you to crayfish tonight. Besides, we can still stay in touch, call, and video chat. I didn't respond, just turned and left. Veronica, there won't be any future. I will never contact you again. Chapter 2 during the summer vacation, Veronica invited me out a few times, but I always found excuses to refuse. Eventually, she stopped asking. However, she was active on social media, and I could always see her updates. She was living her best life, traveling all over the place with friends. A few days ago, she was in Tibet. Now, she's in Inner Mongolia. Today, I opened social media and saw pictures of her at the beach. There were six or seven people in the group, all people I knew, her classmates childhood friends, both boys and girls, they took a lot of group photos together, in the pictures, she's standing with her back to the sea, smiling brightly, see, she's so happy without me around, I remember what I once told her, I said I wanted to see the ocean after the college entrance exams, at the time, she scoffed, what's so special about the ocean, her unwillingness to go with me was obvious, so I never brought it up again, turns out, it wasn't that she didn't like the ocean, she just didn't like going with me, she was always clinging to me, it was really annoying, that was what she said that day, I never knew she found me so annoying, annoying enough to lie about wanting to become a doctor and aiming for Peking University, after I applied to Peking University, she secretly applied to South University, did she really hate me that much, afraid I'd go to the same university as her, I'm not shameless, I have my pride too, if I had known she hated me, I wouldn't have stuck by her side all the time, but, I used to feel her affection for me, chapter 3, Veronica and I had grown up together like childhood sweethearts, our family's villas were right next to each other, and we had been neighbors for over 10 years, our first meeting was in kindergarten, at that time, my family had just moved here, and because I was in a new kindergarten, I didn't see my old friends anymore, I cried non-stop when I arrived, Veronica came over and handed me a lollipop, patting my head as she comforted me, such a handsome little boy, it doesn't look good when you cry, from that moment on, I became Veronica's little follower. Wherever she went, I followed. It wasn't just in kindergarten, even at home. Once I found out we were neighbors, I didn't even go into my house after coming home from kindergarten. I went straight to her house. My mom was helpless, but Aunt Ku was delighted, saying she had gained a son for free. Actually, even Veronica's parents were surprised that she could be so patient with me. Before, Veronica never liked playing with boys, saying they were too rough. Vero, why do you like playing with Benjamin? Aunt Ku asked her because Benjamin is so handsome, Veronica pinched my cheeks, he has dimples when he smiles, and I like watching him smile, I grinned foolishly, I like playing with big sister too, because my parents spoiled me, and even the neighbors and Veronica treated me kindly, I grew up carefree and without worries, people who are pampered tend to be more childish, and I still thought of myself as a kid even when I got to high school, as for Veronica, I always treated her like an older sister, it was Veronica who took the initiative to bring us closer, she made me realize that I had grown up and could have a man's feelings. Chapter 4 In my first year of high school, I received my first love letter. I was completely stunned, there was a girl who actually liked me. 
With a playful heart, I told Veronica about the love letter. To my surprise, her face immediately changed. Benjamin, you're only in your first year of high school. You're not allowed to date early. She said seriously. Of course not. I don't even like that girl. I responded without thinking. Are you saying that if you meet someone you like, you would date them? She anxiously grabbed my arm. I don't know. Benjamin, I forbid you from liking anyone else. Veronica stared at me, enunciating every word. Her eyes seemed to burn with fire, intense emotions rolling within them. In that moment, it suddenly clicked for me. Was it what I thought it was? Veronica, did she like me? Because of the influence of TV dramas, my mind instantly started playing out all kinds of sweet scenarios. Except now, the main characters were her and me. In the future, if Veronica and I could be like the couples in those dramas, sweetly dating and then getting married, it didn't seem like a bad idea. Oh no, the more I thought about it, the more inappropriate it became. My face started heating up, all the way down to my neck. Anyway, you have to promise me, no dating during high school. Veronica firmly instructed, caught up in my romantic fantasies. I nodded vigorously. From then on, I became even more attached to Veronica. I no longer rushed home to watch my favorite anime after school. Instead, I sat by the basketball court, waiting obediently for Veronica's dance class to finish, so I could walk home with her. Young and inexperienced, I didn't know how to hide my feelings, and everyone around us could see how much I liked Veronica. The way we interacted began to change. She used to always call me a kid, treating me like her little brother, and loved taking care of me. But over time, it shifted to me taking care of her. She was always too impatient to eat breakfast. So every morning I'd bring two breakfasts, making sure she ate on the way to school with me. If bad weather was coming, I'd text her the night before, reminding her to wear more clothes the next day. If she caught a cold, I'd be more anxious than she was, preparing cold medicine for her in advance. At first, she would laugh at me, calling me her little caretaker. But over time, she grew more impatient, even saying I was like her mom, always nagging her. I felt wronged. I was just worried about her. Eventually, she lost her temper with me. Chapter 5 During the summer break of my second year in high school, one evening, Veronica was invited to a friend's birthday party to sing karaoke all night at KTV. Veronica was worried her mom wouldn't agree, so she asked me to cover for her, saying she was going to a classmate's house to study for senior year and would spend the night there. Since I had always been seen as obedient by the adults, Aunt Ku believed me and allowed Veronica to stay out, but later that night, I checked social media and saw pictures posted by her friends, they were drinking at KTV. I was shocked. Veronica had never drunk alcohol before. She was only in her second year of high school, still a student. How could she drink? What worried me more was that she still had a cold and a slight fever. Would drinking affect her recovery? There were so many empty bottles on the table. How much had they drunk? I started to panic. I called Veronica, but she didn't pick up. I paced back and forth in my room, and after half an hour, I couldn't take it anymore. I went to her house and told Aunt Ku what was happening. That night, Aunt Ku went to KTV and brought Veronica home. She even scolded the birthday friend in the private room, saying he was leading Veronica astray. Veronica felt humiliated. After being grounded for three days, she came out of the house and called me to meet her. At my front door, for the first time, Veronica lost her temper with me. She yelled at me, telling me never to interfere in her affairs again. Benjamin, who do you think you are? What right do you have to meddle in my business? The kind of person I hate the most is someone who tattles behind my back. I had never seen Veronica so fierce. When I went home, I felt sad for a long time. I thought, I'll never talk to Veronica again. For the entire summer, I didn't contact her. When senior year started, not long after, it was my birthday. Veronica bought me the game console I had been wanting. She stood in front of me, looking up with a pitiful expression. Little Benjamin, I was wrong. Don't be mad. Okay. I was so weak-willed, I immediately forgave her. After that, Veronica and I would sometimes have arguments, but every time, she would say a few sweet words, and I'd let it go. In the second semester of senior year, I asked Veronica where she planned to apply. She said she wanted to become a doctor and would apply to Peking University. What about you? She asked, without hesitation. I replied, wherever you go, I'll go, but I was a bit worried I wouldn't get in. After all, the score threshold for Peking University was pretty high every year. Veronica said she would help me with my studies. That was another thing I found irresistible about her. Veronica was truly smart. Even though I worked harder than her in school, my grades were never as good as hers. She was always so casual, yet she always did well on exams and was loved by the teachers. Under Veronica's tutoring and supervision, my grades finally improved. If I get into the same university as you, can you grant me one wish? I looked at her with hope in my eyes. Can I refuse? She smiled at the corner of her eyes. No. 
If you refuse, I'll lose all motivation to study. All right. I promise you. She looked helpless. We both knew what that wish was. Yes. My plan was to confess to her once I got into Jidai University. When the exam scores came out, they were just as I had expected, I was guaranteed a spot at Jidai University. But when the acceptance letter arrived, I realized that Veronica had been plotting this for a long time. She wanted to get rid of me. Chapter 6 When university started, while everyone else was excited to step onto campus, I was the only one with a gloomy face, feeling utterly down, being tricked by the girl I once liked the most. I fell into deep self-doubt. Was I really that unlikable? Did she go to all this trouble, planning for so long, just to shake me off after we started university? Veronica had always had better grades than me, and I had never expected to get into the same university as her. Back then, my only wish was that we'd be in the same city after high school. I didn't mind the inconvenience, I could go see her whenever I didn't have class. Of course, Veronica knew what I was thinking, but she didn't want that. She deceived me just to make sure we wouldn't be in the same city. Peking University and South University were thousands of miles apart. She got what she wanted. I spent the first semester of university like a walking corpse, daydreaming in class, absent-minded after. I never took my studies seriously. Compared to the diligent medical students around me, I was an outcast. I never had any real interest in medicine and never thought about becoming a doctor. Back then, I applied to this school purely out of my love for Veronica. I used to daydream about holding hands with her after we started university, walking through the campus enjoying a shamelessly sweet romance. I never actually considered that university also meant serious studying. The change came during the winter break of my freshman year. When the break started, I took a flight home. On the plane, a passenger sitting next to me had a heart attack and stopped breathing for a moment. It was the first time I'd ever encountered such a situation, and I was terrified. While the flight attendants and passengers were panicking, an older passenger stepped up and began performing CPR on the men. Twenty minutes later, the man's breathing finally became smooth and he regained consciousness before the plane landed. When he opened his eyes, many passengers were moved to tears. He had almost lost his life right in front of us. Now, he was alive again. Experiencing that moment made me understand the profound impact of saving a life, and the words of that passenger who saved him kept echoing in my mind, I'm a doctor. Witnessing firsthand a doctor saving a life left me deeply shaken. I always knew that a doctor's duty was to save lives, but I had never seen it in person. It turns out, saving a life is so honorable. It turns out, those with such skill are so admirable. Before I knew it, I started thinking, I want to be like him. For the first time in my life, I felt a desire to pursue a career. I wanted to become a doctor. Chapter 7 During the entire winter break, I locked myself in my room, trying to catch up on all the first semester courses I had missed. I didn't go out, didn't contact Veronica, and didn't see her even once. I didn't even know if she had come home during the break. In the following years of university, I put all my effort into every subject determined to excel. Being a medical student was incredibly tough. It felt even more exhausting than senior year of high school. Every day, I would wake up before dawn to study, and only return to the dormitory when the sky was filled with stars after a long day in the library. The schedule was packed, and I never seemed to have enough time. During the four years of university, I barely had time to stroll through the streets or go out to have fun, but the hard work paid off. Every semester, I managed to earn scholarships, and the professors began to remember my name. Busyness was the best cure for sentimental feelings. I thought less and less about Veronica, only occasionally hearing about her from former classmates. She started dating someone during the second semester of her freshman year, rumored to be the most popular guy at her school. Their relationship only lasted a little over three months before they broke up. Over the next three years, she had several boyfriends, but none of her relationships lasted more than a semester. The first time I saw her and her boyfriend's photo in our high school group chat. I felt nothing. That's when I knew I had completely moved on. In my first year of graduate school, I started dating. My girlfriend was a sophomore. Her name was Selena, a special recruit from the Art Institute, and she was very beautiful. It was through the recommendation of my mentor that I became the team doctor's assistant for the Art Institute, and that's when I discovered that our university even had an art institute, filled with special admissions students. Their everyday curriculum had nothing to do with medicine. The rigorous workload that most medical students both loved and hated, they didn't have to deal with any of it. After being used to seeing only men in the medical school, the first time I went to the Art Institute and saw the team members training, I stared in amazement. Their graceful figures were mesmerizing. It was like opening the door to a new world, and I couldn't take my eyes off them. Selena was the captain of the dance team and the person I watched the most. There was something about her confidence and aloofness when she danced that was incredibly attractive. What I didn't expect was that after I treated her knee injury for the first time, she confessed her feelings to me. Her directness caught me completely off guard. 
I was so stunned that I forgot to act reserved. My brain froze, and I agreed purely on instinct. Chapter 8. Later. I found out from Selena's teammates that she had had a crush on me since her freshman year. It all started when I gave her a band-aid. Once she mentioned it, it triggered a vague memory. A year ago, outside the school's supermarket, I saw a girl cut her hand while opening a package. Blood immediately started dripping from her index finger. I quickly opened my backpack, hesitated for a second when I saw the Peppa Pig band-aid, but handed it to her anyway. I only remembered that the girl was pretty cute because her face flushed all the way to her ears when she put on the Peppa Pig band-aid. Turns out, that girl was Selena. Fate works in mysterious ways. She told me that everyone on the team knew she had a crush on me. She often attended our elective courses just to see me. Her friends encouraged her to boldly pursue me. But she heard I was the study maniac of our college. So she was afraid I only cared about studying and didn't dare confess. When I came to the team as an assistant, she was over the moon. Her teammates teased her, saying she strutted around like a peacock every day in front of me, eager to show off all her dance moves until one of her friends couldn't stand her hesitation anymore and teased her by saying that if she didn't confess, she would make a move herself. When Selena heard that her friend liked me too, she panicked. That day, as I was treating her knee injury, her friend purposely said, Senior, do you have time later? I was thinking, he doesn't have time. Selena immediately interrupted her and then looked up at me. Senior, will you be my boyfriend? When I said, sure, she was so stunned that she thought she had misheard. Her friend gave her a nudge. What are you waiting for? Silly, didn't you hear? He said yes. It was only then that Selena snapped out of it, grinning foolishly at me. Chapter 9. Later. Selena would always ask me if I had ulterior motives from the beginning, wondering why I agreed to date her so quickly after her confession. Did you become our team's medic just for me? Just so you could see me every day? Were you secretly in love with me? Pretending to be calm on the outside but head over heels inside? Do you fall in love through imagination? I laughed helplessly. Can't you at least lie a little to make me happy? Actually, I fell in love with you at first sight and have been scheming to get close to you all along. Humph. I knew it. She proudly lifted her head. Darn. You got your way. Ha ha. This girl is pretty cute. Although Selena was younger than me, she took care of me most of the time when we were together. Young people are full of energy. Every morning, she had an hour of dance practice without fail. Before we started dating, she used to wake up at 6.30, practice, and then have breakfast. After we got together. She adjusted her schedule to wake up at 6 o'clock, so she could finish her training and then have breakfast with me. Sometimes, when I was too lazy to eat, she would buy breakfast and bring it to my dorm. You don't have to work so hard. Waking up so early every day, not getting enough sleep will affect your health. I felt a little worried for her. Don't worry, big brother. Your little sister is strong and healthy. She smiled cheekily. You're my energy station. Just seeing you for a few minutes in the morning gives me enough power for the whole day. Maybe it was because Selena took such good care of me. But after we got together, I realized that dating was actually pretty wonderful. We never fought, because whenever we disagreed, she would always give in to me, and she really knew how to spoil someone. I found myself becoming more and more dependent on her. I used to think I was a very independent person, handling everything myself, but now, even when I wanted a cup of milk tea, my first thought was no longer to open my phone and order delivery, but to ask Selena to get it for me. It's true, sweet words can erode the heart. She said she wanted to spoil me until I couldn't live without her. And she succeeded. When the winter break came, Selena took me to the airport. Are you really not letting me go with you? She asked, pretending to be upset. You've already asked that 180 times. I was exasperated. Actually, I don't need any official status. I could just stay in a hotel nearby. And you could come see me when you have time. Just promise you won't forget about me. How did I never realize she was such a drama queen? Alright, behave. I'll video call you every day. Promise. Finally, I managed to calm her down and waved goodbye. Chapter 10. A few days before the Lunar New Year, my mom told me that Aunt Ku had invited our family over for dinner. Veronica is bringing her boyfriend home today, my mom said. Her mom said it's been a while since both families got together, so she thought it would be nice to have a lively gathering. Wow. Vero is bringing her boyfriend home. That's a first. My curiosity was piqued. Is he good looking? Your aunt has only seen pictures, but she says he's quite handsome. Well. Veronica always had high standards. My mom smiled. When you two were little, we used to joke about how you and Vera would end up together. Do you remember? I pretended to forget. Really, I don't remember. To me, Veronica has always felt more like an older sister. Fate is funny like that. You grew up together with Veronica, but no romance came of it. Only a sibling bond. That's a good thing too. But look at her. She's had several boyfriends already. And here you are, a graduate student, still single, 
My mom's tone turned serious. I used to worry about you dating too early, but now you're in your 20s. Isn't it time to start? I cleared my throat. Uh, mom, I already have a girlfriend. My mom's eyes lit up with excitement. You do? Where does she go to school? Even as we reached Veronica's house, my mom kept asking about Selena's details. My dad pretended to be uninterested, but he was clearly eavesdropping with keen interest. When we arrived at Veronica's house, I saw a handsome young man sitting on the sofa. He had short black hair and wore a white shirt, looking elegant and attractive. After graduating from college, Veronica hadn't pursued further studies. Instead, she joined her family's business, learning management from her father. The young man was her assistant. I heard he also graduated from a prestigious university, and within a month of joining the company, he became Veronica's assistant. Not long after, the two started dating. Aunt Ku mentioned that his parents were both high school teachers, coming from a scholarly family, compared to Veronica's last boyfriend, who had tattoos all over his arms. Aunt Ku was thrilled with this one, even though she never brought any of her boyfriends home before. She sure dated quite a few. One of them worked as a bartender in a nightclub. I was so worried Veronica would get caught up in something bad. A boy working at a bar, could that be simple? Thankfully, they broke up after just a month. Aunt Ku had shared this with my mom before. It seemed Veronica had had a rich dating history over the past few years. When my parents and I arrived at the Lin family home, the older folks went to chat in the smaller sitting room. I sat on the living room sofa, playing on my phone, while watching Veronica and her boyfriend showing off their love. The two of them were snuggled up together the whole time. The only acknowledgement Veronica gave me was a greeting when I came in. And then she went right back to playing games with her boyfriend. Why are you so bad at this? Don't run around randomly. Just stick with me. How did you set off the trap again? Now you're going to attract all the enemies. After listening for a bit, I realized what game they were playing. It made me think of my Selena, because she had introduced me to that same game. I wasn't particularly good at gaming, often getting lost even in big buildings, unable to tell directions. But Selena was much gentler with me, no matter what mistake I made. Even if I accidentally exposed our position during the final showdown and got her killed, she never got angry. She would just smile and say, It's okay. It's just a game. Chapter 11. During dinner, the older folks couldn't stop complimenting Veronica's boyfriend, calling him both handsome and capable. My mom even asked, So, when are you two planning to get married? Veronica just smiled without answering. I noticed the smile on her boyfriend's face falter slightly. By the way, Benjamin, have you started dating? Aunt Ku asked with a smile. Before I could answer, my mom jumped in. He has. His girlfriend is younger than him. Veronica choked on her water and her boyfriend quickly patted her back. How much younger? Uncle Ku asked. Ever the gossip. Three years younger than me. She's a sophomore this year, I answered. Just three years. That's not much of a difference. Aunt Ku said. When will you bring her home to meet us? For some reason, just thinking about Selena's face made me smile. Since we got together, I've been feeling much happier overall. Maybe next holiday. I thought for a moment. If I come home, I'll bring her over. Veronica put down her chopsticks and said to my parents. Uncle. Auntie, take your time eating. I'm done. She got up from the table. Her boyfriend quickly set down his chopsticks and smiled apologetically at us. I'm done too. Then he stood up and hurried after Veronica. After dinner, I didn't see Veronica or her boyfriend around the house anymore. We spent some time at the Lin family home before heading back. That afternoon, I went out to pick up a package. When I opened the door, I was startled to see a familiar figure leaning against the wall outside. Vero, what are you doing here? You're really dating someone? She stared at me. Her eyes filled with emotions I couldn't quite understand. Yes, I nodded. Veronica was silent for a long time before she finally spoke. I'm sorry. Huh? I was confused. About the college applications. She explained. Oh, that. It's fine. That was so long ago. I said. Almost having forgotten about it. Back then. I was young and impulsive. I wanted everything to go my way. I thought you were too controlling. Too clingy. So I wanted to get rid of you. That's why I lied. Saying I wanted to be a doctor, I knew that if I applied to Peking University, you would definitely apply there too. That had hurt me deeply at the time. Her actions had indeed been painful, but years had passed, and now I was truly over it. I tried to comfort her. It's okay, Vero. I'm not angry anymore. It was my selfishness that hurt you. I only cared about my own little schemes and didn't think about your future. You have your own dreams, your own things you want to do. I shouldn't have used such a careless way to decide your future. Veronica's voice was tinged with bitterness. I've heard that studying medicine is really hard. You even have to do a combined bachelor's and master's degree, which takes so many years. If you don't put in the hard work, you won't do well. You never wanted to be a doctor before, so it must be difficult for you now. No, Vero. I actually like studying medicine now. I interrupted her. Really? 
When I first started, I was frustrated for a while. The subjects were tough, and I even thought about reapplying to another school and changing my major. But eventually, I changed my perspective, and now I've fallen in love with medicine. My dream is to become a qualified surgeon. Seriously, since sophomore year, I've been winning scholarships every year. I'm doing really well. Veronica smiled softly, tilting her head and blinking at me like she used to. Really, that amazing. Of course, I said proudly. Then I wish you all the success. She encouraged me. Thanks. I felt a bit embarrassed. And I'm sorry, Vero. I must have been a real burden to you back then. Always clinging to you. I was young and didn't know any better. I hope you don't hold it against me. Ben. She laughed. You were never a burden to me. The one who was young and foolish was me. Chapter 12. Not long after the semester started. One day. While Selena and I were on a date. I suddenly got a call from Veronica. Are you free tonight? I want to treat you to dinner. She said straight to the point. Huh. I was surprised. You don't even live in the same city as me. How are you going to treat me to dinner? I'm here on a business trip. Oh, well, I already made plans with Selena. We're having dinner tonight. Selena, your little girlfriend. Right. Why don't you both come along? I'm not going to bite. All right. I'll pick you up at six at your school. After I hung up, Selena asked, who was that? A neighbor, an older sister. She's here on a business trip and wants to treat us to dinner. At six sharp, my phone rang. Veronica told me she was already outside my dorm. I was surprised. I never told you my dorm building. She sounded confident. How hard is it to figure out? Didn't you say you were one of the top students in your department? I just asked one of your classmates. I quickly called Selena and asked her to meet me downstairs. When I got downstairs, I saw Selena already standing at the entrance. I ran over and grabbed her hand as we headed out. A sleek black car was parked outside the dorm. Its luxury brand and elegant design standing out like a sore thumb on the humble campus attracting quite a few curious glances from other students. To make matters worse, standing next to the car was a stunningly beautiful woman, dressed to perfection, not wanting to become the center of attention. I quickly pulled Selena along and gave Veronica a look. Let's get going. Since there was a driver, Selena and I sat in the back while Veronica took the front passenger seat. Why were you in such a rush to get in the car? Veronica asked with a laugh once we started moving. Your car and your presence are way too flashy. I didn't want to be stared at, I said, smiling. Ah, I didn't think about that. Sorry about that. Veronica apologized good-naturedly. When we arrived at the restaurant, I noticed the decor was absurdly luxurious. Even more ridiculous were the other diners. Everyone was dressed in formal attire. Men in suits. Women in evening gowns. Selena and I stood out like sore thumbs. She was in casual wear. And I was even more conspicuous in my sportswear. Once we sat down, I whispered to Veronica. Why such a fancy place? I thought we were just grabbing a casual meal. Veronica chuckled. This is casual. I was worried Selena might feel uncomfortable sitting there. But she seemed completely unfazed. Enjoying her meal more than anyone. I was overthinking things. After we got back to campus, Selena asked. That Veronica, is she really only three years older than me? Yeah. She's my age. I nodded. She seems so mature and wise. But her actions are kind of childish. What do you mean? Selena wrapped her arms around me. She likes you. I could tell. Tonight. She was showing off her wealth in front of me to make me feel inferior. But I'm not falling for it. My heart is strong. Besides, you liking me is my greatest wealth. Something she can never compete with. How could that be? Vero already has a boyfriend. She even brought him home for the new year. Women's intuition is never wrong. Chapter 13. After that dinner, Veronica started coming to our city on business trips more often. And every time, she'd find an excuse to visit me at school. In the past six months, I've seen her more times than I did in the past four years combined. And each time we met, she'd bring me gifts. Once, I posted a photo on social media, showing a trip to the mall. In the bottom right corner of the picture, there was a tiny glimpse of a glass display case with a watch inside. Two days later, Veronica showed up and brought me that exact watch as a gift. It was outrageous. It was just a casual photo. And I hadn't even noticed the display case in the corner. I started to realize things were getting a bit out of hand. When Veronica asked to meet again during another business trip, I made up excuses to avoid her. After I turned her down three times, she called me. Are you avoiding me? No, I'm just really busy. I play dumb. I barely even have time to spend with Selena lately. And she's been complaining. You don't need to spend any time with me. Just tell me where you'll be. And I'll come see you for a few minutes and then leave. Vero, we're in the middle of a closed lab experiment. My advisor is really strict. It's just not convenient. I stuck to my refusal then I'll wait for you outside your dorm. You have to come back to the dorm eventually. Right. I'll just see you for a minute and then go. Veronica's tone was firm. I sighed. It seemed like I had no choice but to meet her. That night, when I returned to the dorm, 
Veronica was already waiting outside. This time, she didn't drive the flashy car. To avoid drawing attention, she even changed out of her fancy clothes and wore casual attire instead. I brought you some chestnut cakes. My mom made them especially for you, she said, holding up a box. It's a gift from the elders. You can't refuse this time. After thinking for a moment, I said, Vero, let's find a place to sit and chat. We went to a small bubble tea shop just outside the back gate of the school. The tiny shop, with its small tables, looked completely out of place compared to Veronica's polished appearance. You haven't been to a place like this in a while, huh? I started. It's obvious we've become people from two different worlds. You're a successful career woman who frequents high-end venues, and I'm just a student buried in my studies. Benjamin, don't push me away like this. Veronica's voice was filled with sadness. Hearing you say things like that makes me feel awful, but it's the truth. We grew up together, and that was our bond. But after the college entrance exams, we went our separate ways, and that bond ended. That's the thing I regret most in my entire life. Veronica's eyes were full of a sadness I couldn't understand. Huh. I didn't quite follow. If I had known that being apart from you would turn out this way, I never would have done what I did. I was so young and arrogant. Now I understand that those few words can ruin someone's life. Veronica kept her gaze fixed on me. Actually, not long after I started my first year of college, I already regretted it. Benjamin, do you know what it's like to miss someone? I used to be annoyed by how you clung to me, always wanting to shake you off and enjoy my freedom. But after we were apart, when you weren't around, I realized how much I needed you. She put her hands to her forehead. I didn't realize how important you were to me. You were like air, something I never noticed, but couldn't live without. I used to complain about seeing you every day, but after going to university, I realized how happy those days were. Now, just getting to see you is so hard. Chapter 14. I laughed. Do you even believe what you're saying, Veronica? You started dating as soon as you entered college. Over these past few years, you've had more boyfriends than I can count on two hands, and now you're playing the role of someone deeply in love. At this point, my patience had run out, honestly, I didn't want to see her anymore, our families were neighbors, and our parents had a good relationship, after she played me over such an important thing as college applications, I let it go, out of respect for our families, but that doesn't mean I think highly of her character, I can keep up appearances for the sake of the elders, but privately, I would never get close to her again, this is what they call one mistake leading to another, Veronica said with a bitter smile, I was so young back then, Full of this inexplicable arrogance, I always thought that if I contacted you first, I'd be lowering myself. I was too proud to make the first move. I thought if I dated someone else, I wouldn't think about you as much. But even though I had boyfriends, the emptiness inside me never went away. I realized that wasn't what I really wanted. I even made sure you heard about my relationships, hoping it would provoke you into reaching out. But you stayed quiet. I wasn't satisfied, so I changed boyfriends again, and it turned into a vicious cycle. That's quite a strategy. I said honestly. So what you're telling me is that you've liked me all this time, and your way of showing that was by constantly getting new boyfriends. You deserve everything you got. Yes, I deserve it. She admitted. The moment I found out you had a girlfriend, I realized just how wrong I had been these past few years. You weren't holding a grudge, you had really moved on. I was so sure that since you hadn't dated anyone during that time, you were waiting for me. Veronica, no one waits forever for someone else. I'm not that stupid, and you're not worth it. I know I don't deserve it. I've made too many mistakes and now it's too late. She grabbed my hand desperately. Benjamin, I'll change. If you like cute and caring girls like Selena, I can be like that too. I'll be anything you want. Just give me one more chance, please? I firmly pulled my hand away. I have a girlfriend, and I love her. You had a boyfriend too. We broke up, right after New Year's. I'm single now, she interrupted, her voice urgent. That's your business, I said calmly. But I'm not breaking up with my girlfriend. This is the last time I'll see you. Don't come looking for me again. It's really annoying. As I stood up to leave, I saw Veronica slump over the table, her shoulders trembling. Chapter 15. After that, Veronica never came to see me again. Finally, she understood. Things with Selena were stable, and we were happy together. After graduating from medical school, I started working at the city's first hospital and became a surgeon, just as I'd hoped. Work was busy, but my relationship with Selena didn't cool off. She always made time for me. Sometimes, when I had to work late into the night, She'd bring healthy meals to the hospital, and during my short breaks, we'd eat together. No matter how hectic things got, she always found a way to see me. Even my mom said, Selena is so good to you, she does so much for you, don't let her down, my mom advised. When I was 28 and Selena was 25, I proposed to her, that year. She graduated with her master's degree and was about to start a new chapter in her life, on the day of the wedding. I was so excited that I woke up at 3 a.m., pacing back and forth in the living room. In just a few hours, I'd be going to meet my bride. From this day on, 
we'd be together for the rest of our lives. The more I thought about it, the more excited I got. Later that morning, the makeup artist had to use quite a bit of concealer to hide my dark circles. It was my first time wearing makeup, and it felt kind of fun. On the way to pick up the bride, I couldn't resist texting Selena. My tone was playfully pitiful. Haven't seen you in three whole days. I miss you so much. She sent back a heart emoji. From now on, we'll see each other every day. Yep. And you'll have to give me a good morning kiss every day. We kept chatting back and forth. Suddenly, my phone rang. It was Veronica. I hesitated for a moment before answering. Ben, I'm standing on the rooftop of Ku Tower right now. If you go through with this wedding, I'll jump. I gripped the phone tightly. Vero, don't do anything rash. Ben, I was wrong. Please don't get married. Don't marry anyone else. Just the thought of you spending the rest of your life with someone else makes me want to die. I can't stand it. I can't watch you walk down the aisle with another woman. Veronica's voice was trembling with sobs. Selena and I love each other. There's nothing wrong with us getting married. And we haven't wronged anyone. I replied calmly. I don't care. I won't allow it. I don't want you to get married. If you insist on going through with it, I'll jump off this building. She shouted. The only thing I can do is call the police. What happens next is none of my concern. I said clearly. So even if I jump, you won't stop the wedding. Veronica asked. That's your life, not mine. I can't control what you do. All right. All right. Veronica laughed bitterly. Benjamin, you're cruel. I'll make sure you regret this for the rest of your life. She hung up. I called the police, gave them the details and location, and continued on my way to pick up Selena. The wedding went smoothly. Selena was the most beautiful bride in my eyes. After the banquet, I got another call from Veronica. I lied. I didn't jump. She said weakly. I just wanted to check one last time if you had any feelings left for me. If you did, I was ready to do whatever it took to win you back. But now I know. I overestimated myself. You really don't care about me at all. Besides, I couldn't bear to make you feel guilty if I actually did jump. I let out a sigh of relief. That's good to hear. There was a pause. And then Veronica said, Ben, I wish you happiness. Thanks. I will be. Chapter 16. Selena and I were very happy after getting married. We had a pair of adorable twins. A boy and a girl. Our family and the Ku family still kept in touch regularly. When Veronica turned 30, she couldn't stand her parents' constant pressure to get married. So she agreed to go on a blind date. Not long after, she got married. Less than a year later, they divorced. Aunt Ku came to my mom, complaining bitterly, saying she overheard Veronica talking to her ex-husband on the phone. And that's how she found out the two had an arranged marriage. Her ex-husband was still deeply in love with his deceased ex-girlfriend and had vowed never to fall in love again. Veronica, on the other hand, had no interest in romance anymore. Both of them were under immense pressure from their families to get married. So. They made a deal to have an arranged marriage just to appease their families. A year later, as agreed, they divorced. Now, whenever their families pushed them to remarry, they simply said, why get married again, just to get divorced again? That response successfully silenced their elders. Can you believe it? She even came up with such a ridiculous idea and went through with an arranged marriage. Does she think marriage is a joke? She gets married and divorced just like that. How did I end up with such a troublesome child? Aunt Ku sobbed as she complained. My mom did her best to comfort her. Veronica's parents didn't know what to do with her. They were afraid that if they pushed her too hard, she might come up with some other wild idea. And so, Veronica never married again. Later, during a finance interview, the host asked her why she wasn't married. I missed my true love and realized I lost the ability to love anyone else. I wouldn't want to waste someone else's time. She said with a lazy smile. True love, Selena, sitting beside me, gave me a sharp look, with a strong sense of self-preservation. I quickly grabbed the remote and changed the channel, giving an awkward smile. Oh, I didn't know she had a true love. Wonder who that could be. Dad, who's your true love? My daughter, sitting on the floor playing with building blocks, asked me. I pulled the gentle woman beside me into my arms. Of course, it's your mom. No way. My daughter pouted. Mom is my true love. She's mine, I said, playfully arguing with her. My daughter, unable to win the argument, ended up bursting into tears. Selena quickly picked her up and comforted her while shooting me a glare. Really? You're arguing with a child? Our son also grabbed a toy to help cheer up his sister. I looked around at the toys scattered all over the floor, the chaotic living room, my crying daughter, and my wife and son comforting her, and I couldn't help but smile. I stood up to start my daily task, picking up the toys. It's a chore that really tests your patience, but I enjoy it. This is what life is all about, finding warmth in the little things. Daily meals, the simple joys of family life. This is the happiness I've always wanted.